Line and the Cartesian Plane, both concepts which are probably familiar to you from before. So, to begin with then, a number line. A number line is like any other line that we've been talking about so far, like this over here, for example. I could give this point A and this is point B, so and this would be line AB like this. The difference between this line that I drew over here and the number line is that a number line is a concept that helps us in many different ways because it is marked by these little tick marks over here that measure distance. So a number line is a line that is marked to measure distance. It's basically like a ruler that goes in both directions in uh, infinitely uh, far. So it goes in both directions uh, in, to infinity um, and it is marked uh, with increments that are uh, that can be measured. So basically it's like a very long, long ruler. To help us use this ruler, we divide the number line into like the positive numbers and the negative numbers and we say like a smack in the middle of it theoretically right here would be the number zero. And each tick mark could represent any particular number depending on how, in what circumstances you're talking about. In this case, we could say each increment is one unit long. So you can say that's one, that's two, and that's three, that's four, and that's five. And this would keep going on because of the arrows here indicating that it will go on forever. And on this side of zero, these would be the negative numbers that you would have over here. Now, we have suggested these numbers here, but you must understand there are infinite numbers in between each of these. So I could have, for example, a number over here, like this, and this would be like 1.5 that's not labeled. Or over here, this number could be like uh, 3.1, etc. So the number line contains all the real numbers, all the numbers that we can think about, and um, but they all are not all listed. The ones that are listed are the ones that are going to be useful for us to solve that particular problem. Now here's another number line that I've drawn over here and let's call this over here zero. And instead of labeling like every like one, two, three, four, five, I could say each of these units is like 10. So this is 10 and this is 20 and this is 30 and this is 40 and this is 50 and this is 60 and this is going to be negative 10 and negative 20 and negative 30 like this so in between here 10 and 20 that might be like 15 right so I could do that but that you can, as you can see is can a little bit cluttered right so in sometimes you don't have to label every single one of these you can maybe label every other one for example I can call this one if this is 10 this could be 20 right here and this is 30 and this would be 40 over here this is uh, 50 and this is 60 over here and that's what this would be 80 and then here I could label this negative uh, 20 and negative 40 and negative 60 like this so you have to label some of these so that the pattern of labeling becomes apparent to people and these numbers are obviously bigger numbers because I might be doing a problem that requires me to use bigger numbers right so how you label a number line depends on particular need what, what you want to do with the number line okay so here in this number line I have the zero and on this side I have all positive numbers right and on this side of zero I have all negative numbers now zero I don't know if you know if it's a, is it a positive number or a negative number what do you think well zero in fact is neither a positive or a negative number it doesn't belong to either this side or this side so zero does not have a sign itself it's not a positive and it's not a negative number okay anyway so on this side we have all positive numbers on the right side and on this side we have all negative numbers and as you, as I stated here in between each of these numbers in, in, in the integers that I've written there are infinite number of other numbers that we have not labeled and in unless we needed to for example and somewhere here this is like pi 3.1416 so pi for example might be right next to this particular number like this now if we did want it to name a particular numbers of interest for example we have we wanted to talk about this number over here which is 1.5 okay you could 
put a dot over there and call that okay you have to say this is like point a or something like that so if you wanted to talk about it a particular number you label it and you can just label it just like any other line you could label it and let's see if you have a point a number over here uh, like like this and that's the uh, point is point b and if it gets too cluttered you can just kind of like write it like this that's going to be like negative 2.6 or something like that so either above or below you can uh, improvise you can say this point is 2.6 and that is point b for example okay so you can if you have points you're talking about and let's say this is point c over here okay so you can label you uh, the points on the number length like, th like this okay so I'm going to label some of these points just so that we can talk about it, right? So here's, let's call this negative 4 point A. And let's call this point right here point B. And let's call this particular point right here point C over here, okay? So, and so we can say that A, B, and C are labeled like this. So A, A, A is at negative 4, B is at negative 1, and C is at positive 5 all right then there's another concept of uh, uh, on the number line that is the absolute value of a particular number if you know if you remember absolute value of a particular number what the absolute value does basically is, is it changes the number and, and if it's negative it becomes positive so absolute value of 4 is 4 and absolute value of negative 4 is also 4 so basically it turns everything into a positive number so absolute value of negative 3 is 3 for example but specifically the definition of an absolute value that's the symbol for absolute value the definition of absolute value is the distance that number is from the zero so the official definition of an absolute value here is the distance from, from on the number line the distance from the number zero so absolute value of a number is the distance that number is that number particular number is from the zero so as you can see over here, the, uh, that C here is 5 units away from 0. And indeed, absolute value of 5 is 5 because the distance that 5 is from 0 is 5 units. In the same way, B over here is 1 unit away, correct? It's, it's only 1 unit of 1 box away over here. And indeed, absolute value of negative 1 is 1. In the same way, absolute value of negative 4 over here, which is a, point A, is 4 because the, the distance from 0 is 4 units, 4 of these little boxes. So the, so the distance here, absolute value of negative 4, is the distance that four, negative 4 is from 0, and that is 4. So the official definition of the absolute value is how far away that number is from 0 on a number line. Now, here's a number line that I have drawn, and I have labeled some of these numbers. Now, I didn't put all of the numbers because it would get a little cluttered. So the 1 would be here, 2, 3 is here, 4, and then 5 is here. So I just kind of wrote even numbers. You could just write all the odd numbers, too, and skip the even numbers to make it less cluttered. So sometimes you avoid clutter by skipping a digit here and uh, uh, in between but you do have to label the number line so everybody knows that the distance between each of these units okay so anyway so I have drawn over here a number line and I have written out some um, points over here D E and F so we understand the difference now uh, the distance between a number and the zero that's the absolute value so the absolute value of, of 6 the dis absolute value of F for example would be you can say is the absolute value of 6 and that is simply 6 okay and then the absolute value of uh, negative 2 is 2 because the distance from 2 to 0 is uh, is 2 correct so in the same way you can say the absolute value of 2 uh, of negative 2 uh, uh, is 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 2 the absolute value of negative 8 is 8 that is D is 8 units away from zero correct so that's what absolute value means and then we say the distance between any two points we can calculate now observe 
Now you have point E here and point F. How far away are they from each other? Well, that's easy enough you can calculate, right? So like from here to here is 6 and from here to here is like 2, right? So they're like 8 units apart, okay? So, so E to F, that's 8 units apart. That's 2 and that's 6, so they're 8 units apart. You can find that by simply also doing this, okay? 6 m minus minus 2, okay? So that would be like 8. Okay, now I'm going to put a different point here, point G over here like this, and that's actually at 3, isn't it? So, now, what's the, what's the distance between F and G? How far apart are they? Well, it's easy to know. You can just, you know, count it out, right? It's 1, that's 2, and that's 3. So, they're 3 units apart, right? Or you can say, well, you can also subtract the two, right? You can say, you know, okay, so the distance from G to F is like 6 minus 3. You take 6 and you take 3. You subtract them together, so the distance is going to be 3. So if you want to say the distance from G to F, in geometry, remember, you write like this. If the segment GF is written like this, and GF means the distance between the GF or the measure of GF. So the measure or the distance between GF, this is how you would write that in geometry, you would say is simply, is simply 6 minus 3. Another way of saying that is, the, is simply using the absolute value terminology. This means the distance between G and F. In that case, then it's the absolute value of 6 minus 3 because absolute value here represents distance, okay? If absolute value of a number is simply how far that number is uh, from the zero, absolute value of two numbers or two points in a line is the absolute value of the difference of those two points. So the distance between f and g is simply uh, uh, 6 minus 3 and take the absolute value of that and that's going to be 3. In the same way, you can calculate the distance between e and f and you have to appreciate that that one is a negative number, the other one is a positive number, and that doesn't really matter because you can still calculate the absolute value between the two. So the, the measure of EF, okay, is going to be the, basically the absolute value of EF like this, okay? The length of EF is going to be absolute value of EF, and you can do that by saying either negative 2 minus 6, okay? Negative 2 minus 6, all right? So, and that is negative 2 minus 6 is negative 8, but the absolute value of 8 is 8. So, as you can see, the, diff the distance between 2 and 6, these two numbers, is going to be 8. Correct? Now, it doesn't matter here if you do it like this, or if you say that the distance between EF is uh, 6 minus minus 2. So, if you take the first number and subtract from it the second number, which is negative 2. So if you subtract from it the negative 2, so this becomes like a positive, right? So negative uh, minus minus becomes a positive, so this becomes 6 plus 2, and that is simply 8, and the absolute value of 8 is 8. So no matter how you do this, that is, if you subtract 6 minus minus 2, or you sub subtract 2 minus 6, but the answer comes back the same, because the absolute value of both of these is going to be 8. So the absolute value represents the distance between two points like this, and they both come out to be a, either way you calculate it. So at the concept of absolute value is very useful in calculating distances between two points. When, if you're speaking of only one number, uh, when you're speaking of only one number or one point, the absolute value represents the distance that number is from zero. And when we're speaking about two numbers or two points, the absolute value represents the distance between those two points. Okay? Now, in the same way, in the same question here, what's the distance between D and F? So, well, the distance between D and F, again, let me do it over here. Okay? So, the distance, the length of DF, or the distance between DF, like this. So, this would mean the measure of the segment DF, or the distance between DF 
is, is you can subtract the two. Either you can do eight, negative eight minus six. Okay, that's negative eight minus six. And that is going to be negative 14. Absolute value of negative uh, uh, 14 is 14. Or you can do the opposite because six minus 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 eight like this. In this case, these would become positive, and this again would become 14, and that again is 14. So either way you calculate the, uh, the distance between the two points, if you use absolute value, it will come out to be the same. Okay, so we've calculated out here that the distance between D and F, okay, that's negative 8 minus 6, and that's going to be 14. So I have suggested to you the distance between these two points is 14 units. Each box represents a little unit. So 14 units. All right, so what's the midpoint between these two points? In other words, which, what's, where is the point that's halfway in between them? Well, that's easy enough. The midpoint, okay, the midpoint would be halfway through. So if the distance is 14, the midpoint would be uh, 14 divided by 2. That's 7 units apart in between, right? So I just go, okay, 7 units. So start from here. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or like this, correct? So, okay, that would be the midpoint. Let's call that M. The midpoint would be, is, would be at negative 1, okay? So that's easy enough to do. So the midpoint is you can find the whole distance and divide the distance by half, and then you just go that many distance between the two. Another way of finding the midpoint, okay, is simply taking the average of the two numbers. So, so the midpoint would be simply the average of the two numbers. You take negative 8 plus 6, and then you divide it by 2. Negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2, and negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1, just like we got over here at negative 1. So you can see, you can calculate the midpoint simply by taking the average of two points. So let's say in this particular case, midpoint of negative 4 and 5, we just add them together. Negative 4 plus 5 is 1, and divided by 2 is half, so that the midpoint in fact is 1 half like this. Okay, so on a number line, the midpoint is easy to calculate. You simply take the average of the two numbers. So now we know several things. I've suggested to you the absolute value of a number. Let's just say absolute value of, of any particular number, x, is simply the distance that number is from the zero. Okay? So absolute value of any particular number is the distance that number is from zero. And then I said the absolute value of any two numbers like this, like D and F, is how the uh, is absolute value of the of the uh, of the uh, uh, of the two numbers is the how, how far apart they are from each other. In that case, basically you subtract the two numbers like this and then you take the absolute value of those. So when we're talking about absolute value of two numbers is we talk about distance between the numbers. Okay? Between the numbers. Alright. And finally I suggested to you the way you find the midpoint between two numbers, the, the number that's smack in the middle of the two numbers, you simply just take the average of two numbers. The first number is x1, the second number is x2. You just take the average and you just divide by 2, you add them up and divide by 2, then you get the midpoint. Okay, fine, we're almost done with the number line stuff that we need to know. Here again I said between D and F, the distance between those two points is 14. We got that by subtracting them, taking the absolute value. Alright, now, and then I said the midpoint between these two is like here, and I just took the average of those two values, and I got the midpoint. Okay, how about this? What if somebody asks, um, What's a number that's uh, one third away from D? Well, let's say if you were, if you, if this was like your home right here, D was like your home, and then you were going to your friend's house, right? So, and their friend's house was on, located at point F. So here's another house you can draw, right? So you're going from this point to this point, 
and you can say well when you get to the midpoint you're halfway through right so when you get to over here you, so you go from your home to your friend's house and you get to the midpoint you're clearly halfway through and then you say well when you get to one third what's one third of the way what's two thirds of the way how do you find that out right well it's it's reason it's e reasonably easy well if uh, the whole distance is uh, 14 half the distance is 7 so the midpoint is 7 and one third of that would be if the whole distance is 14 units one third of that would be simply one third of the whole distance which is 14 like this or 14 over 3 right so that's 4 and 2 thirds right so 4 and 2 thirds so if you wanted to find the midpoint or uh, 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 one third away from the distance so you go four units and two thirds that's one two three four units and two thirds okay that'd be right over here and that at that point actually is going to be negative three and one third like that okay so if you wanted to find how far away a point is from a point a you simply take the distance and multiply it by uh, um, the whole distance so for example uh, I want to know uh, when I'm three-fourths the distance from D to F what's the three-fourths the distance from from 3 to F okay um, well with that three-fourths the distance is simply three-fourths times 14 well you can simplify this a little bit 2 goes in there like that 2 goes in and 2 goes in there 7 times uh, that's 21 over uh, that's 3 times 7 is 21 over 2 and that's 10.5 units so you have to go from here to 10 and 10.5 would be right there okay 10.5 units from a that's 8 units here and 10 units here so that would be a 2.5 so when you add 2.5 you are 3 fourths the distance from there so the way you calculate how far away from, from, from here to here you are from point A let's say to point B if you want to know one third or one fourth or any particular fraction like two fifths, you calculate the whole distance, and whatever the whole distance is, you just take the whole distance and multiply by whatever fraction you want to from here, and that's how you know how far you are away from point A to the, the other point. Okay? All right. Okay, so just to make sure that we understand, I have another number line here. And notice this time I labeled the odd numbers. I so said this is one, zero is one, and I skipped the even number so that the number line doesn't look cluttered. It looks kind of neat. So negative one, negative three, negative five, negative six. And I have left two points here, point A and point B. So the first question is how far away is A from zero? Well, that's just simply the absolute value of negative seven, and that's seven. So A is seven units away from zero. Okay? Then what's the distance between a and a, a b or what's the length of a b and that's simply the absolute value of these two points like this okay so it doesn't matter if it's negative 7 minus 5 or 5 minus negative 7 so i'm going to do negative 7 minus 5 and that would be okay that's like negative 12 right and the absolute value of negative 12 is 12 so the distance between a b is 12 you can okay I could also calculate it the other way around that is I could start from 5 so 5 and then I could subtract the negative 7 so 5 minus negative 7 see like this okay and then you know minus minus becomes plus over here and this becomes 12 so either way calculated the distance obviously is going to be the same so the distance from A to B is 12 units long okay and finally, what point, okay, which point, which number, which point is one third away from A towards B, okay? Towards B, okay? So, which number is one third away from, well, starting at A, and if the whole distance is 12, so one third of 12, okay? Three goes in there one, three goes in there four times, that's four. That'd be four units away. So four units from A would be one third away from A towards B. So that's one, that's two, that's three, and that's four. And that would land you right here at this particular point. If there was a point given name, let's call that E, that would be point E or something like that. Okay? So this point E is one third away 
from A. Okay, so that's some introductory remarks about the number line. Now I'd like to talk about the Cartesian plane a little bit, at least introduce the topic to you. A Cartesian plane, C A R T E S I A N, is named after the uh, French uh, mathematician and philosopher Rene Descartes. Okay, so. Um, uh, seven, early, early 17th century uh, of, uh, mathematician. He's the one who uh, extensively used the Cartesian plane, it bridged algebra and geometry, so to speak. So it's named after Rene Descartes. So this is a Cartesian plane, and sometimes it's also called the coordinate plane. Coordinate plane. But I like the word Cartesian plane because it gives you a little bit of historical perspective and things. A Cartesian plane is really nothing than two number lines uh, perpendicular to each other like this, okay? A Cartesian plane has uh, 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 two axes, and this is typically called labeled the x-axis, and it's a line that goes in both directions like this, although frequently you only put the line like this to make it look prettier, but the lines actually go in both directions forever. So this is typically labeled the x-axis, and this here is the y-axis and these are like two number lines. So there's two number lines of course this is like the zero point and here would be all the positive numbers here on the x-axis and on this side would be all the negative numbers on the x-axis. So we can label some of these numbers on the uh, on the axis. So let's, let's do that. So let's call this one 1 and this would be number 2 and that's number 3 and on this side this is negative 1 and negative 2 and negative 3. In the same way on the other axis, y-axis, this side is positive and this side is negative. Alright, so uh, so we would have all the positive numbers on this side, that's 1 and that's 2 and that's 3 and on this side you would have negative 1 and negative 2 and negative 3 and negative 4 and it would be like that. So negative 4 would be here. So now the Cartesian plane or the coordinate plane is different because it's a two-dimensional uh, uh, representation. Not a number where a number line is only one-dimensional, right? So it goes right and left. It isn't right, left, up, down type of thing. And every single point that's on the Cartesian plane has uh, can be mapped out, okay? So this point, for example, and this point, for example, right? Let let's take um, let's take this these two points over here. Each of them have uh, have uh, can be discovered or found or labeled with two points. Okay, two numbers. The first one of these numbers represents the x value, and the second set of number is uh, second number is is the y value. And same here, the x and the y value. So each point in this Cartesian plane is represented using a pair of numbers uh, or an ordered pair. So here, that's an ordered pair. All right. So the ordered pair is a pair of numbers that designate a particular point on the Cartesian plane. The reason it's called an ordered pair is because in this pair of numbers, the first digit, the first number, always represents the x value, and the second number always represents the y value. In other words, you can't just lump them together. Sometimes the first one is the x, the other times the first one is the y, and sometimes the second one is the y, and sometimes the second one is the x value. No, no, no. The first digit expressed will always represent the x value, and the second digit expressed will always represent the y value. That's why it's called an ordered pair. It's not like a disordered pair or anything like that. So the first, for example, this particular point, the first ordered first number would be the x value, and the second one would be the y value, like this. So this digit represents how far you have to go from zero to reach there. So if you find the two, right, which is over here, that's how far you have to go from here. And then y value is also two. That means that's how far high you have to go to find the point. To f so to find this particular point, you have to go two units this way and then two units that way. X is and Y. So in this case, it happens to be two and two. 
but this ordered pair to get there you have to go from here all the way to here and then you have to go up here like that right so that ordered pair in fact would be this point here which is 4 the x value would be 4 and the y value would be 3 like this okay so that would be like the ordered pair like this so 4 3 so the ordered pair that that corresponds to this particular point is 4 3 okay like this so let's label these points you, let's call this point point a right here and let's call this point the purple point point b so point b as you can see is is labeled with this particular ordered pair x value being 4 y value being 3 like this all right and point a over here is labeled with this particular ordered pair where x value is 2 and the y value is 3. in the same way if i told you uh, find point c and d let's say i give you two more points over here point c is going to be negative 2 and negative uh, uh, 4 and point d is going to be uh, 3 and negative uh, 2 okay let's find try to find these okay c would be negative 2 negative 4 so x value is negative 2 so you plot down to negative 2 and the y value is negative 4 means you have to go down 2 3 4 like this okay so that's going to be point c and if you were to label the ordered pair you can write that over here like this how about point d point d is 3 and negative 2 so you go to 3 and go down to negative 2 right there so that would be point d and the corresponding ordered pair would be 3 and negative 2 so today i just wanted to introduce the uh, cartesian plane uh inshallah next time i shall elaborate on this a little bit more in the cartesian plane uh, you have two axes the x-axis is horizontal axis and the y-axis is the vertical axis over here and every point in the cartesian plane is represented using an ordered pair it's called ordered because the first number in the pair always represents x it doesn't have to be stated and the second number always represents y and therefore it doesn't always have to be stated. you don't have to say y is negative 2 x is 3 it's assumed everybody understands it that that's an ordered pair and that's x value and that's the y value of the number now notice that on a number line every number is represented only using a single digit whereas in a Cartesian plane every number is uh, uh, represented using two uh, every point is represented using two digits that is over here point A was represented using only one number negative four and point B was, was rep represented using only one number negative one whereas every point on the Cartesian plane okay is represented by two numbers so every point here the address is represented so to speak by two numbers whereas in the number line the address or the, the location is represented by only one number inshallah we shall elaborate on this next time until then assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum